So the issue is that um, we know that fish and other seafood, I'll just call it fish for convenience, is a great source of lots of nutrients. And that includes nutrients that are hard to get enough of in other ways. So the main nutrient that we think of when we think about fish is the omega-3 fatty acids, um, which are actually called, um, the nickname is marine fish oils because it's really, uh, a fish is the primary source. And um, these omega-3 fatty acids are not found naturally in any other source. There are some short chain fatty acids that are sort of the parents of the long chain fish oils that are found in nuts and seeds but um, the fish oils themselves, the long chain omega-3 fatty acids are only in fish. And so what we know is that people who eat fish fairly regularly get more, uh, more fish oil and more omega-3 fatty acids. And um, we know that omega-3 fatty acids are important in particular for the development of the brain and the eye. And from animal studies, we know that fetuses whose mothers you know, did not consume any um, had uh, serious problems with brain development. So the issue is that um, there's, uh, there are contaminants and toxicants in the world, and one of them in particular that we worry about for fish is mercury. Um, and the issue is that mercury concentrate, is concentrated um, by the algae and the little plankton and bacteria that live in the oceans and the rivers, and then um, concentrate up the food chain. So although there's mercury everywhere in the world, it's in the air we breathe, it's in the water we drink, um, in particular, once it's concentrated and the little bacteria are eaten by bigger bacteria, which are eaten by little fish, which are eaten by bigger fish and bigger fish, that concentration accumulates up the food chain. And so um, the biggest fish, the ones that have eaten a lot of other little fish below them, get very concentrated amounts of mercury. And even the medium-sized fish have some level of mercury. And so while fish and seafood are a main source of good nutrients, including omega-3 fatty acids and also vitamin D and iodine and calcium and protein. They're also the primary source of methylmercury. And we worry about mercury because it's a toxin to many uh, systems of the body, but especially to the developing brain. Um, so um, the research that I have uh, conducted looks at this issue of whether um, pregnant women should eat fish, and if so, what kind of fish and how much to eat. And we know that um, women who eat fish that have been poisoned with mercury have kids that can have devastating neurological problems, cerebral palsy, blindness, deafness, death, really serious stuff. What we don't know is if pregnant women who habitually eat seafood from the oceans and the rivers that's not really highly um, poisoned with mercury, but just regular consumption of the kinds of seafood that we get in the grocery stores are likely to result in um, in harms for mothers and babies, and the babies in particular. Um, there have been some studies in populations living on islands where uh, people eat on the order of you know, one or two fish meals a day, and stu those studies that have followed up moms and their kids have found somewhat subtle but statistically significant differences in several developmental outcomes in the kids whose moms had higher mercury levels. Um, so uh, the work that I've done is really focused on pregnant women here in the community. I live in Boston, so we've studied women in Massachusetts, and these women are eating one or two fish servings a week on average, not one or two fish servings a day. Um, and what I think we've added is that we have looked not only at the associations of the mom's mercury level with the kid's development, but we've also looked overall at the associations of how much fish they ate and what kind of fish and, and their relationships with the outcomes in the kids. And what we found is that in these sort of more moderate fish consumers, the children of the mothers who ate um, uh, more than two servings of fish a week did better on these tests of development. This is, this is just to be clear, this is not, um, the kids whose moms ate less fish were not, you know, cerebral palsy and dead and, you know, really devastated neurologically. We're not talking about that, but we're talking about um, developmental tests that are um, tests of, you know, cognition and, and um, um, visual attention and language in early childhood. Um, and so we, um, so we saw these subtle differences in the groups uh, that looked like they had the best test scores were the ones whose moms ate more fish, so more than two servings of fish a week, but had the lowest mercury levels, which suggests that the best group to be in is the one that eats a lot of fish, but the fish is low in mercury. One of the big lingering questions, however, in this body of research is whether 
it's not really that there's really a true benefit of the fish overall or whether it's just that the people who eat more fish tend to be more health conscious and so we still need to do more research in this area to really figure out um, whether um, the benefits are you know what what fish types are most beneficial exactly and then also to make sure that it's really that it's the fish that's helpful not just a healthful lifestyle